we can view the present value as follows. If the present value is positive, the investor is getting out more than they're putting in. But if the present value is negative, the investor is putting in more than they're taking out. Since we want to provide an objective measure of value, we often assume the net present value to be zero. And if the net present value is zero, then the investment has a fair value for the investor and the financial institution. So again, there's many variables in this equation, so let's see if we can solve for each one given the others. For example, suppose you deposit 1,000 now and 1,000 next year to get a payout of 2,500 in two years. Let's find the effective interest rate and we'll assume compound interest. So we'll assume a net present value of zero and our discount function, one divided by one plus i to the t, and we'll compute. So our deposit of 1,000, that's a negative. Our deposit of 1,000 at time one, that's negative 1,000 v1, and our withdrawal payout of 2,500 at time two, that's 2,500 v of two. To simplify the solution process, we note that our discount function, one over one plus i to the t, and we note that v of one, one over one plus i, and v of two, one over one plus i squared. Now, while we could solve this equation as is for i, we'll make the following substitution because it will simplify our computations. We'll let v equal 1 divided by 1 plus i. Then v of 1 is v, and v of 2 is v squared, and our equation becomes quadratic. And we can solve this using the quadratic formula. So again, not computing until we reach the end of the problem gives us. Since i and 1 plus i must be positive, we can ignore the negative square root. Then solve for the interest rate i. And so our interest rate works out to be 15.83% effective. Let's consider another problem. Suppose you deposit $1,000 at the end of the next three years at 5% annual interest. When will you be able to withdraw $10,000? So there are transactions of minus 1,000 at t equals 1, 2, and 3, because they're deposits and they represent money going away from you, and 10,000 at time t, which we don't know. So the equation for net present value is... We'll isolate the expression containing the unknown quantity. Now to solve it, note that the left-hand side is a product, so we'll divide both sides by 10,000. And if we take the reciprocal of both sides, that will eliminate one fraction. It's an exponential equation, so we'll hit both sides with a log. And solve. And again, we save our rounding until the end of the problem and we find that t is about 26.66 years. So let's see if this is a plausible answer. So we can simplify the scenario. Suppose we make all of our deposits 1,000 by 3 at time 0, and let this amount accrue 5% interest for 26.66 years. And our total amount will be or a little over $11,000, which is consistent with the withdrawal of 10000 Now, since the scenario assumed all deposits were made at the start, it overestimated the balance. So if we assume all deposits are made at t equals 2, then the interest would accumulate for 24.66 years, and the amount would be... or a little over $99.99, which is, again, consistent with the $10,000 withdrawal. 
So that 26.66 years seems to be a reasonable solution.